promise that I would put a solar-powered airplane in this museum and show that it is possible to do without oil thanks to pioneering spirit and thanks to clean technologies. And I think it matches very well with the history of exploration because for the 20th century, the goal was to conquer the planet. Now it's done. There were even people on the moon. We can finally go to something else, which is more about quality of life on this planet. And when we speak about quality of life, it's clear that one of the major obstacles is the total dependency that we have on solar, on, uh, on um, uh, fossil energies. Complete dependency we have on oil, on gas, on uh, coal, and so on. And why should we focus on that? Why is it such an obstacle? Well, some people would say because of nature, because of the environment. I would say only partially, because all these pictures of pollution we know since 50 or 60 years. There were already people 60 years ago saying, be careful, we're polluting the planet, be careful, life is a magical gift on this planet floating in the cosmos and we have to protect it. And yes, it's true. But the philosophical language, unfortunately, didn't change a lot. Because what happened? What were the solutions of the green parties in the beginning? The solutions were less mobility, less comfort, less growth, less industry, and nobody wanted less. Everybody wants more. So we stayed with these pictures, started to be completely normal, to have pollution, and uh, now we have the climate change problems. But in the climate change, there is also a big misunderstood. We always describe climate change as a big problem that costs a lot of money. How can you motivate people to find solutions if you only describe a big problem that costs a lot of money? As a medical doctor, I know that the problem is called a symptom. A symptom has an origin, and the origin has a therapy. Now, after a few examples of energy saving that are profitable, of course, you all know that we can produce energy with photovoltaic cells. Spain is a leader for thermal solar uh, producing energy. Uh, you have energy with the winds. I'm not going to take a lo long time for that. You all know it. Little, um, little turbines that we can use in every river, wood, uh, geothermia, biomass, you can use the waste to make energy, you can reduce the, the fuel consumption of a car by two in implementing a hybrid engine, you can put hybrid engines in every car. Why is it limited to Japanese? Why did the Europeans laugh when Toyota produced the first hybrid engine? And now they're running behind with 10 or 20 years of delay uh, in, their, in their research and development. I like this example very much because everybody believes that I took the picture in uh, Europa Park or in Disneyland. Well, this is in Bahrain. It's a country producing and exporting gas that has understood since a long time that the time of cheap fossil energy is over and they are trying to diversify into new technologies. Are we going to let Asia be first or do we also want to innovate and pioneer into this way? Well, we'll see what the future will be. But Europe is taking a lot of delay. We're getting really late when we compare it to the pioneering spirit of Asia. So I think we have to wake up now. We really have to wake up. And I think one way to, to speak about these new technologies, one way to help to wake up, is to finally put a little bit more of passion and enthusiasm into these topics. Because usually it is so boring to hear about new energies, about new technologies, about climate change. People are bored, the people are depressed because of the size of the problem. So let's try to make a little bit more fashion into this uh, topic. And this is what we want to do with Solar Impulse. By having an airplane that is able to fly day and night with absolutely no fuel, We'd like to bring a contribution of the world of exploration and adventure into the energy policy and the economical policy. If an airplane can fly with no fuel, 
Nobody can honestly continue to say that it's impossible to use the same technologies for cars, for heating systems, for construction of houses, for lighting, for computers or whatever. Of course, yes, and maybe not only day and night, but the goal at the end will be to fly around the world in order to make something impossible. Up to now, it has never been done. People believe it's impossible to fly around the world with no fuel. So let's try to make it happen in order to show that with these new technologies, we can achieve things that nobody believes is possible. So of course, you can tell me it's not the first solar airplane. Yes, it's not the first solar airplane. There has been solar airplanes since 30 years. But they always remain an anecdote because they have never been able to carry enough storage device, enough batteries, to store the energy for flying at night or for flying through clouds. So basically, each time the night was coming or there was a cloud, they had to land. And their only range was between <clears throat> 11 in the morning and 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So in this way, they have more shown the, the limits of solar power and new technologies than the potential. So if we want to show the potential, we have to solve the paradox of flying at night thanks to the sun. And this we can do if we store enough energy in batteries in order to spend the night in the air. And it has been done by some Americans and English uh, people. 